Great. Good evening and welcome to the February 27th meeting of the Town of Arlington Redevelopment Board. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, before we begin, I just want to let everybody know that this meeting is being recorded by ACMI. Um, my name is Rachel Zemberry. I'm the chair of the Redevelopment Board. Welcome to our guests who are presenting this evening. Um, before we start, I'd like the uh, members of the Redevelop Redevelopment Board who are here this evening with me to please introduce yourselves. Uh, Steve Rebelak. Eugene Benson. Ken Lau. And we also have with us the um, Assistant Director of the Department of Planning and Community Development, Kelly Linema. Hello. Welcome, Kelly. Um, so we will go ahead and uh, jump in and get started. Uh, so thank you all for joining us this evening. The first item on our agenda is the continued public hearing for docket number 3650 for 190 to 200 Massachusetts Avenue. Uh, what we will do first is um, ask uh, Kelly to top line any items that she'd like to highlight from the memorandum that was prepared by the department. Okay. Um, so just as an update, the applicant provided to us earlier, well, in the middle of the week previous to last, a number of updated materials. We reviewed those materials, discussed with the applicant a couple of things that we had questions on. And so in the memo that we've provided to you, we've just outlined that they have in fact responded to each of the concerns that the board raised during the prior hearing. Um, two things that I just wanted to bring up, um, actually three. So the first is that they, actually, they are meeting the bicycle parking requirement and actually exceeding that. Um, and have brought some of the long-term bicycle parking up to the ground level. So it's split between the below grade and above grade. Um, the second thing is that um, through the TDM plan, they've provided two potential measures for your consideration for s satisfying the requirements of the TDM plan. Um, and then the third is to work with our department administ for administrative review. This is something that we have worked with this applicant on in the past, and I understand that in the in the prior situation where we worked with them on the TDM plan, it was because they weren't sure exactly who the tenants were going to be in the ground floor commercial space. And so that's something that you know we've experienced with them that they're responsive to and they just want to the ability to survey those tenants in the commercial space in order to understand what their needs are before they prescribe exactly what the transportation demand management scheme would be for that element. Um, and, and it does have to do with, you know, if you did have a bakery where you had somebody who had to come in at five in the morning, providing a transportation pass might not be the appropriate measure of TDM in order to, in order to satisfy that requirement. So it's just retaining a little bit of flexibility. Um, and then the third thing to note is that I did talk with the applicant about a butter outreach. I know that they did do two meetings, at least two meetings in advance of this hearing with neighbors. And if they want to go ahead and describe that at all as part of their presentation, they're welcome to. But I do know that they did reach out to Abutters and, and met with at least two of them. Great, that's it. Thank you for the update. Mm -hmm. um, so at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Attorney Anessi yes. for an update. Great. We have our uh, and I'm with... so sorry, if I could actually ask um, for those of you who are um, presenting this evening, we can move the microphone, but um, we'd really love for you to, to use the microphone so that those people who are watching remotely can hear. Can I sit and... Uh, sure, we can angle that, I'm sure. Good. Oh, there you go. Ah, it's movable. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Thank you, Kelly. We have our, enti our entire team with us uh, this evening, and we have tried uh, to the best of our ability to respond to the questions, and we did uh, adopt your suggestion, Rachel, and uh, I, we sent letters out to some of the abutters, okay? some of the abutters more directly impacted by what we're pro uh, proposing to do. And we heard back from uh, a few of them, and we had uh, a couple of meetings. And I thought the meetings went well. We didn't uh, accommodate all of their concerns. I didn't think we would when we uh, uh, entered the meetings, uh, but uh, uh, the meetings were productive. So uh, what I think what I'd like to do at this point if it's okay with uh, the board, is have the board uh, uh, get to my people and ask any questions the board may have with respect to our submission. Fantastic. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Happy to happy Good. to move to that to that next step. Thank you, Good. and thank you all for um, submitting the revised packages and the memo outlining 
what you, um, how you've responded to each one of the board's requests. I appreciate that very much. Um, so at this time, uh, I'll go ahead and, and start with Ken for any questions. We'll save any deliberation or discussion until after public comment, uh, but any questions you might have on the revisions for the applicant. Well, thank you for um, uh, removing that arch. I, I think uh, it made, it'll make that space so much nicer, I think. Um, and also uh, get rid of the tandem spacing and uh, that, that also is very, I think it's much uh, easier to work out now. Um, my first appearance of this building, as I thought of, of it last time I saw it, it's a bit um, dark and heavy. And I was wondering, would you guys mind um, lining up some of the material? Naming the, this, the aluminum panel you have up there and or your siding. It's, it's, it's very dark gray. Um, can, can I just ask, Kelly, would you mind um, to a moving to one of the renderings, this please? One, this one would be great. Thank you. Can you zoom up a little bigger? There you go. Uh, or the siding to be a little lighter. I'm not actually going to change anything else, but just the color. It seems very heavy right now, okay? And it seems very dark. Um, I know what you're trying to do, but I'm, I'm just, it, it's, that's, it doesn't go with the rhythm that's happening along Mass Ave right now, okay? And I just wonder if you would mind lightening up a little bit. If I could comment, um, one, of the evolu one of the things that happened that we snuck into the rendering, if you look, you're seeing two tones of gray in there, actually. Uh, a lighter tone and then the tone that you have in your hand. Um, I would propose that we take your, we, we feel the same way and, and that's why in this rendering you see, uh, you see a, a significantly lighter gray in there. Um, and then it's there, the, there's the darker accent. I would suggest maintaining the color of the overhang above the retail. Uh, as being, and, and the other thing is, these materials, when they're outside, um, I agree they're on the dark side, and purposefully so, but they also, um, they come across, there's a lot more reflection, so the, the rendering is fair, is a bit more, um, I think, um, true to how this building's going to read um, relative to everything around it, and, and so the combination of the lighter material that's that's shown in the rendering to get at, and and, uh, and the character of the material in daylight, I think, um, you know, m might respond to, to your concern, uh, as I had a similar concern, frankly. And I would I would say I, it's too bad I don't I, I could actually go to my car and get the other sample, but I, I perhaps will have an opportunity I, I, to do I, that. But. I think the question is, can we lighten it up a bit? Well, we kind of. My point is that we already are in this rendering. Uh, the darker uh, tone that you see in the rendering corresponds to what you have, and the lighter tone is, you know, many tones lighter than what you have in your hand. So, can you sh show us where this darker tone so sure, is in the rendering so versus the lighter? Because I would agree that one of the other so rendering, the the this rear material in here, yeah, would be this. This is, uh, you know, the, 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 in fact, the, 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 the that's the, the lighter. The thing is, you know, quite quite many tones. So he's saying that tones are, is around the window. That's just around the windows. That's not the metal panel. Like, right, right. And this this material here uh, and it is the the metal the, the, the metal material. It okay. Is, it is. It is. Um, if you go to the fourth, the, the last tree on the right, David, point that out. The gray, the lighter gray, right above it. Go up the here. Side. Yeah, that's yeah. lighter. Right. Than we were. Well, if you were to, can we switch to the rail the rear elevation? Rear elevation. <laughs> Right there, yep, yeah. to the left. There yep. you go. See, good that good. looks lighter to me. Yeah, because it is because because you have the dark material, which I'm holding in my hand, and you have the, the majority of the body of the building being. I realized, I'm, yeah. like I'm saying again. We're on the same page, bottom line. I think. Yes. So the the back of the building looks much lighter. The front of the building looks much darker. I I would like to ask you to see if you can get the front of the building looking. 
lighter like the back. It might be the shadow of the of the it, rendering. It may be. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, mine looks even much darker. I, I think, right? I think we'll need to see a sample of of the, the material. You know, for sure. Okay. Yeah. So that's that. Um, one of the things that I do have some small concerns about is where you laid out the solar panels. They're right up to the edge. Yeah, but uh, no, that's, no. That's a, well, that's let a me, graphic let, representation. Let me finish. It's not okay. the way solar panels are. Let me, let me finish. Yeah, go ahead. When there's, when there's roofing equipment on the roof and it's within 10 feet of the edge of the roof, by OSHA you have to put up guardrails. That's 42, 42 or 46 inches in height. I don't want to see guardrails on top of your roof. I really don't care where you put the solar panels, but once the solar panels impact the edge of the roof where you have to put the guardrails up, I do care because you'll see that. So what I'm asking you is, can you pull the solar, pa solar panels away from the edge of the roof so, the, so there's no requirements for the guardrails? I see no reason why we couldn't do that. Okay, and you still will meet the, uh, the requirements of the uh, square footage of the, uh, of the solar panels? Yes. That's what I'm asking for, okay? Yes, we can do that. Thank you. Um, that was that was one, and the other one was if you. I think this is, this is a small ask, but on the top floor, I had asked you to reverse the top unit, so the bedroom was not at the corner of uh, the building. The, yeah, right there. Because right now that corner is the is the highlight of the of the whole corner of that block there, and, and you can see it go by. And the bedrooms are generally dark, except for at night. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, so if you can just whip it around like you have on the lower floors, I think that's easy enough done. It just gets a more of a uh, lively corner right there, which I think is important. Because when, you, when you're coming down Mass Avenue, you, you want to see it kind of light. All right. So I'm just that's a small ask, okay? And if you say you cannot do it because it screws up the market of their unit or whatever. Let's talk about it. But let's. But if you can do it, I'm sure you can. Yeah, I'm sure I can too. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna stop here because I, I, as I, I want Rachel to say a few things about that, and uh, we'll, we can talk more about this. But that that was the main gist of what I had there. Okay. But thank you for listening to some of our changes earlier. Great. I'll actually uh, move over to Jean next. Thanks. Um, let's start at the basement where you added some of the bicycle storage, 18 bicycle storage. Um, right there, thank you. Kelly, is it possible for you to put a bumper to separate the bike storage from the driveway? Because the, the zoning regulation says to the extent feasible, bicycle parking shall be separated from motor vehicle parking to minimize the possibility of bicycle or auto damage. And I'm concerned that the bike, the cars pulling back out of the spaces could hit the bicycles unless you had some sort of bumper. So is that something you would do? A bollard or? Bollard or I, something. There's, there's gonna be a lot further articulation of the enclosure. We're not even showing that it's enclosed. Oh, okay. There's, it okay. has a, it's gonna have a steel mesh enclosure. It is like the Bollards like will the also be floor. a part of it. Okay. These, are, these are very important details that we, admittedly at this stage, we've taken this as, as to a certain point, you know, um, but there's there's several layers across the board, and, and one of them is definitely the security of that place in terms of, you know, you have to have controlled access so you can get your bike, and, and we're, we will configure it and everything so that it's uh, accessible. And the next, well, you don't have to go to the next slide yet, Kelly, but the, um, the next floor where you had the other bicycle parking did show a cage for the bicycle parking. Yeah. Is this going to have a cage? Yeah, like that? that's that's the intention. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, the, the part where the ceiling height is, if I saw it correctly, in the basement, six feet, seven inches. 
Um, point? No, the no. minimum height that we're going for is going to be seven feet. We know we can we can accomplish that. We had some, you know, some last minute conversations about the. Um, the right there. Yeah. That's it. We have, yeah, we're going for, now, we don't have structural drawings yet. I always anticipate, in, in, having done a few of these, I, I'm anticipating a worst case scenario of about 24 inches for a beam depth. So that's kind of my datum, and then I know I have about a five and a half to six inch slab. So right off the bat, I'm losing 30 inches from my building height from floor to floor, and we, 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 we account for that. So if you can see, for example, you know, when you get to areas like this, um, you know, here we have seven foot clear, and, and that's and that is making an assumption that is pre-structural drawings that this beam could be as deep as um, 24 inches, which is it might be. The other thing, you know, we, we've gotten into situations where if we wanted a little more uh, clearance in the building utility uh, cavity up here, uh, we could actually pull that beam back. And add a smaller beam. We've we've done various things to get the headroom, but we now know, having done enough studies, that uh, we can achieve the, the the maximum grades where we have parking, which is two percent. We have uh, a ramp uh, grades that we that we've resolved, and um, there's a significant amount more real detailed work to, to happen here once we get structural drawings, and that that um, conversation goes back and forth, but. Um, what I can tell you, having designed it, is that I know that I can meet the necessary requirements and I can get the headroom that I need. Um, we don't anticipate more headroom than seven feet. We're not imagining box trucks or anything going down here, but when you look at, when you look at how tall vehicles are, 99% of them fit within a seven foot range and well below, actually. Vehicles are not often as tall as people think they are. I'm going to come up as long as they're up there, too. Gene, if you do, can I ask you to drag the thing over with you, too? Thank you. Thank you. You're referring to this area in here? This area. Yeah. Um, more than ample for the front of a vehicle. Um, so you think this is not going to get above? I, I do actually think it will get higher. You can, see, you can see that this is a work in progress because you've got all these different lines here. This should just be a parallel line. So um, um, we will be able to manage that. And if we needed to, even if we needed to lower that a little bit, we could. Um, what's, what's, the, what's the length of requirement? Does anybody know? What's that? The height requirement. Oh, well, this exceeds any height requirement in this part of the vehicle. Oftentimes, they will actually put, um, uh, uh, like, Massive vet ducts right. and things like that in the parking area there. Um, and how many? How many of the spaces are going? About. Uh, if you want to scroll this to sure. um, backwards towards uh, the front of this, this the plan set, I can show you. I think it's like four, maybe. I don't know. Um, we'll see in a minute. <laughs> here we go. Uh, here. Yeah, beautiful. Um, so we're it's talking so about these here, actually three. Yeah, these three. Which three? These three. This one? Or just these three over here? Yeah. And honestly, by the time we're, we're done, we have, you know, we, we, can get it, we can get it to work so that it's... Uh, <clears throat> they, I've seen actually uh, places where they have bicycle storage above the hood of the car and some of the parking. Uh, okay. So, okay. Thank yeah. you. It, 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 remarkably, um, this layout uh, worked out almost to the inch like if we were missing another if we were missing three feet or something it wouldn't have fit you know we were, we were really quite fortunate they were able to to maintain um, the, the clearances the parking distance we even ha get bonus distance from the lot line which is really nice so we don't have to actually worry about you know being in the public way so etc you know there'll be f now I, I don't have to use fancy footings here to stay out of the public way I can use a standard footing say you know it's, it's, uh, it, it was a it was a nice fit okay. <laughs> So on the ground floor, going up one more, I, 
I was unclear where the garage door would actually be located. Sure. Right along here. This is a rolling, this is a, um, um, uh, what is it? Um, <laughs> Roll up door. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, it, there's no chain or anything. It's a, it's a, uh, it's, it's a, uh, the word, the very common word escapes me. Um, so these cars are technically outside. They are, yeah, they're outside, but yeah, it's completely screened. The lighting is up high and low so that there's only a glow for safety. Um, and that's basically it. Um, there, there will be some, un, you know, in here, um, uh, some, some down lighting on inside the sort of garage area. Nothing is going to spill out. There's a rendering that shows that. Yeah, there's a rendering that shows that. Thanks, because I didn't see Yeah, here you go. Well, well yeah, here you go. It's, it's all in here. So. Can you go back? Down sure. To the other side? So the so the elevation. Okay. The bottom center one was the. Was yeah. Wait, sorry. Which one? That floor plan. The one we were looking at before. Okay. Thank you. Oops. So anybody could technically go here. here. Yeah, yeah, they technically could. And sure. this will be screened. So. That's completely screened, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So, your parking summary, I just want to point out on C, I think it's C102 is incorrect. The minimum required for apartment buildings is, is one space per unit. You have the old amounts before the bylaw was changed. So um, you basically would need 30 residential spaces, not whatever this shows out to be. For the 30 units, so it's a little bit it's a little bit different um, than you have on here. So instead of um, minimum required spaces, 44.7, maybe my colleagues can correct me. I came up with 36 spaces mm -hmm. that were required. So there are. There are fewer spaces that we have to do something about than you've told us. Um, getting getting to that, we you know we we can waive the six commercial spaces as you know um, with a TDM plan and and um, with some other findings we'll have to make, and we can also reduce the residential spaces with a good TDM plan. I don't, personally, I don't see adding three extra bicycle spaces as being a TDM plan for residential units since we've heard the bylaw sort of calculates what's an appropriate amount of bicycle spaces. So I don't see it for that. I know last time Mr. Revelak asked if you decouple um, the parking from the rent and you agreed to do so. I did some research about that to see if that really works and the jury's sort of out on it but leaning against it really making a lot of difference. Um, it depends on a lot of things but um, the, and I say the jury's out but I'm not convinced that that's you can put it in there. I'm not convinced it will work particularly well. What I read said that in most cases, they think what happens is that the building owner ends up making a little more money because they charge the apartment rent plus the parking so that the residents who have parking end up paying a little bit more, but it doesn't actually reduce the need for the parking. Um, so I'm not really sure 
about that. So I've been um, wondering, concerned, how we get rid of the four spaces that you need us to reduce. And one way to do it is to add one more um, affordable unit. So you'd have seven instead of six, because under the bylaw, if you add one more affordable unit, you get a 10% reduction in the amount of required spaces, which would then go down to 27, and then I'd be fine about reducing it one more to 26. So I'd like you to consider adding one more affordable unit, which would, I think, resolve the issue with how we get you from 30 to 26 residential spaces. Um, and that's, if you want to look at that, that's uh, section 8.2.4 of the zoning bylaw. Um, I'll let you think about that while I go through the rest. Um, stackable bike racks, what do you, which I think are the ones that you're having on the next level up. What is a stackable bike rack? Tell I me think you is. could go to the page that shows that would be great. These are actually really nice racks. I've seen them. Okay. Um, and yeah, yeah, I, I there saw it those. But what I didn't it is is it's. Quite understand how it, it just allow. Well, it allowed. It, it's kind of how do I describe it? I mean, there's a there's a there's a bracket for each each bicycle, mm -hmm. and it supports the bike and the wheels. And it's there's one and one and one. They're kind of alternated. So, yeah, you would have to lift the bike to shoulder height to get it to the. So it's not one where the the um, rack goes down and goes up automatically. Um, there are yeah, it's those... like the one in Aylway. Where, uh, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, we can give the, you a, 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 a more comprehensive yeah, look at how that works. The rule under the bylaw is that unless we approve otherwise, not allowed to require a bike to be lifted off the ground without physical assistance. That's in the zoning bylaw. So I think there are ways, there are bicycle racks, because I've seen them in other places, where you pull out and they come down, you put the bicycle on and it goes back. And I think that would meet the requirement. You've seen those too, mm -hmm. I assume. And I think that would meet the requirement of the zoning bylaw. Whereas having somebody having to lift up the bicycle, I think is not the way to go with this because there is an alternative that would work. So I think you need to look at that. <coughs> Shade trees. Um, can you go to the page? Thank you, it's shade trees. So the rule is one shade tree every 25 linear feet of frontage. So on, I, I couldn't quite figure out the linear, but on Chandler, it seems to me you at least need one more shade tree, which probably can be at the corner next sort of by the transformer between the transformer and the side I'll speak to that. Yeah, let's do that. Have the uh, over here utilities on since this camera. So can you put another shade tree over here? Sir. Alright, so this would be the shade tree here like three. Now on this, yeah. It's really lines narrow. Are, are right here. They're it's really narrow. Well, so I think the alternative, which is in the bylaw, is um, to make a um, payment to the Arlington Tree Fund. I don't know how much those payments are, the tree, but maybe we can talk about it. Yeah. Because I think there should be at least two or three on Lake Street if it's not possible not possible to get the trees in. Yeah, so that would, I think, need to be done for the trees. Um, yeah, and I think one more, I think I have enough on Mass Avenue, I think one more in Chandler would be enough, because you can't have one, obviously, where the driveway is. Um, I've never driven my car through a tree, intentionally or not. Um, gross floor area. Can somebody explain to me how you calculated gross floor area, please? Gross, gross floor area, GFA, outside wall to outside wall, complete everything included. Okay. 
area of residence, inside wall to inside wall, actual area of residential, very accurate. So those are the differences. One is one is referred to in the in the real estate industry as net, and the, and then GFA. GFA, it, 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 I've never you know it's all it generally always includes from the outside skin of the building. Mm -hmm. okay. So there's no and, and it and it includes uh, elevators and stairways and all that stuff. Okay. Um, open space. How did you calculate the two types of open space? Can, can you show them to me on one of the drawings where they are? I think if you back up to 102. Sorry, hang on. No. Uh, 102? 102, yeah. There we go. Thank you. Can you, can you hear me now? Perfect. Um, so we did. We called it out on the sheet. Oops. Oh, sorry. too far. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so this this area here, 722 square feet. This is landscaped open space. Um, these areas here, landscaped open space, landscape open space, 26 square feet. And then this patio area. Uh, it's not landscaped open space. So it's just these. One, two. Three. So, so is, is the patio the usable open space then? Y yes. That gets added. Not landscaped, but usable. 609. Okay, so this is the only usable you know, landscaped one. I have a question about, let me see. I have to look this up because I don't remember this. One needs the 25. Uh, that is usable. Usable. Does, do you think the usable one has that? What are, what are the dimensions of the patio? You might go to the architectural drawing. There would probably be some useful dimensions there. Uh, yeah, well. Back. Yeah. So, um, so the, the, you have 14, 14 feet from the base from the base of the building to the lot line in this direction, and without. And I actually, yeah, I have another dimension, 30, 31.5 feet. So it's it's it's, it's used. You know, it's big enough to be something something. You know, <clears throat> we can throw a few tables out there. Right. I saw um, that. You've got um, yeah. And you are going to have an entry from. That Retail tenant, from that tenants. Yeah, the idea is to have that completely open. Yeah, a garage door. Yeah, the, the folding type that does this. Okay, those, thank you. Those were my questions. So I think the the one, well, the two things are that I got are the stackable bike racks and whether you can get the. I don't know what they're called, automated. I'm sure there must be a system out there we can use. I'm sure there is a system because I've seen it, we'll find it. in Europe. I don't know if you we'll can get them it. in the US. And um, and what to do with your residential parking and whether you do one additional affordable unit to get to the number of residential parking spaces. That's it. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Because I'm surprised you did not mention it. Are you... Um, in agreement with the categorization of the rear of the building as a side yard and not a rear yard? Oh, I'm glad you mentioned that. <laughs> I wasn't going to ask them because I thought that was for our We can discuss it later. We can discuss, discuss it later. later. Okay, we'll table that. Go ahead. Okay. Um, let's see, so, so one of the things I, um, I actually did a double take when I looked at your dimensional sheet. Um, be, because this was listed as a um, as in the greater than twenty thousand square foot category, um, it's actually the lot size is under twenty thousand, so you're in the under twenty thousand square foot category. One of the the significant difference for your project is that the greater than twenty thousand square foot category uh, also comes with a six hundred a minimum of six hundred square feet of lot per dwelling unit. Um, 
the smaller lot size doesn't have that constraint and basically it would have reduced your unit count by about two thirds if the lot if that if you were you were correct. Um, I just want to point that out in case someone is looking at the sheets and notices it, but you're, you're fine. Um, so with regards to the bike racks, um, I was going to ask if there was a, some sort of mechanical assist. Um, you did put, you did provide the manufacturer of the bike rack and they do have a model. Um, you know, if we, the board were to impose, to ask for mechanical assist as a condition, would, is that something you'd be comfortable with? Can, but that one there has like a ramp that yeah. if that's what you're referring to mm -hmm. all day long yeah you right? pull it down Absolutely. you lean the bike on it and then that's a standard thing to be honest with you I think we overlooked it mm -hmm. I bet you anything they're not asking you to lift it there's yeah there there are both types available yeah. like the ones at the T station you there's nothing you you have to hoist it up I'm happy to hear that I don't have to lift it <laughs> okay <laughs> Um, I also wanted to say um, I, I like the redesign of the and the removal of the tandem parking space. Um, I think that's a that's a good place for the bike parking and the little extra depth on the retail is pro is is also nice. Um, you see, the other things I have I think can wait for our deliberations. So that that's it for me. Thank you. Um, Couple things. Uh, so if we go to uh, let's go to the rendering of the rear elevation, if we could. Um, I also just want to echo that I, I really appreciate the attention that you spent with how to um, reprogram the area when the tandem parking came out. Um, I think that was an excellent solution that you came to. Um, I also appreciate um, that you took a look, I believe, at the, the parapet height and the articulation of the brick. Around um, around the sides, this um, facade here, I I really do like the dynamic nature of the other facades, the the push and pull. You have some of the those, um, Juliet balconies, which are are quite nice. Um, this feels rather flat to me, and um, whether it's introducing um, you know one or or two. You know, vertical rows of, of balconies here. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I um, had a meeting with an abutter this morning. Yes. And said we would add at least another, carry that brick, one more brick section over. That was the other thing that's... I was going to ask is if you Sorry, could said, bring the. I said we would do that. Perfect. Yeah. Um, I, th I think, so that's on the right hand side of this plant, or yes, to the east side? Yes, yes, closer to Perfect. the garage. Perfect. Great. Uh, that was one good. more over to, in the back, yeah. Like yep. In there. Perfect. That was my other question was whether you could return the brick. Okay, um, I um, saw on one of the plans where you indicated um, uh, a few light fixture designations, I believe that was for the building lighting. Did you do any photo photometric calculations in terms of the spread of the, the light beyond the building? And did you have any specifications for the light that's in the um, unenclosed parking area? Okay, so we have um, light fixtures. Um, the building light mounted fixtures. light fixtures. I did see specifications. So, so we have like we have the sconces that are yep. that are facing the, yes. the public way. Right. Um, and then um, I have one light fixture by a by a service door in the rear, about in this yes, location that, that is one. a down light. Yep. Um, and then we have uh, only uh, a handful of. Um, of uh, the, there will be a handful of LED low low intensity lights for safety essentially in the rear, and that's really all the light that we're anticipating at the moment. Um, um, you've got me now searching for uh, some software that will actually be good. in this building not so much, but I'd like to build that. Sure. You know, uh, um, you know, if you feel that you'd like to see, because I I have a particular light fixture in mind here, and we have the the the, the section of it's a beautiful fixture. Um, the other this one here, 
I, I also want to inlay it into the brick a little bit so yep. that it's actually, but that's a little bit down the I, road. But I'm fine with, with those. I think what I just wanted to understand a little bit more was the lighting in that um, parking area, whether mm -hmm. or not um, it will just be the emergency lighting that's on all the time or whether it's I would motion say activated. I would the building, I would keep it on all the time. Um, and it would be very low intensity. Okay. I'm not even sure with a photometric, but the, I, I suppose I mean, ultimately we could. And I don't think do we that. need one. I just didn't. Again, I, I, I didn't have the information to understand what Absolutely. you were proposing under there. So I think if um, we could have you submit that for record, so that again we could understand what the output per fixture is, how many can fixtures. We go back to the the goal you. of it is so you're not walking out. It's dark. So it's just totally understand for so safety. Uh, one more, right, one so more down. Someone can out and yeah. really see what the, anyone's doing. Understood. I just want to understand the impact yeah. on the neighbors. Yeah. Um, we, so the, all the, the, these, Great. Thank you. These spaces want to be lit enough that right. that you can see people what they're doing. Right. So otherwise, they tend to attract. Uh, you know. Great. Um. Uh, Kelly, if we could go to the Lake Street um, facade, the elevation would probably be best. Wait, uh, Lake yes. Street, uh, that one, yep, perfect. And if you could zoom in on that a little bit. Um, I really like the way that you have, um, you have identified the signage canopy for the Mass Ave side of the building. Um, I think, again, since this is your your major tenant, your 3,000 square foot tenant, um, if if I were them, I would want my my signage to be um, a little bit more prominent. I think that there, you know, we have the discontinuity with the sign um, coming down because of the the way that this this balcony um, steps down and the way that it doesn't on the uh, Mass Ave. Uh, facade your your signage is continuous um, as opposed to to on on this particular side of the building um, I want to make sure that there is enough room for signage for that particular tenant oh, yeah. um, below yeah. so you know you could look at that in a couple different ways um, right now you have a prominent building number there Right, so I'm, I'm looking right above the entry doors, which is most likely where the tenant will want to put their, their signage. Um, this is this is where we want the signage for the tenant. That's where you want the signage. You yeah, don't want it very above much the door. So. Yeah, um, and that would be, um, you know, I, I think we would create a tenant criteria package that would, that would limit the size and the type and so that the, it doesn't have to, to be exactly the same. Like if you wanted to brand your font and all that, um, I don't... Um, the idea is that it's surface mounted and low and low light and maybe okay. backlit, something like that. The uh, other thing I think on on this facade that I'd ask you to take a look at because I think you have because of the piers you have and and you know potentially where you have the lighting is to potentially look at a, a bracket signage um, that you know is perpendicular to the to the building and whether or not that's something you might want to introduce. It would be lovely, but it will go into the public way. Blade sign? Do you mean the like blade blades? sign. Are those encouraged? They're allowed. They yes, are. Okay. they are. Yeah. And again, I think in a pedestrian um, oriented area such as this, we've allowed them before. Kelly, correct me if I'm wrong, where they project into the public way. We don't have a taking yeah. process here for public air rights in the way well, that we they have do. Gone down at um, Medford Street. Yeah. For, for some reason, I felt like when I did a site walk, they were discouraged. Planning department. It'll be in section 6.2. I don't know the number exactly because you don't see them too often, but uh, because oh, yeah, like yeah Lake Street has a lot of traffic and a very small sidewalk, and you just probably get more attention yes. from Mass Ave with the blade sign. So again, when you when you do develop your um, signage criteria and package, I would just ask you to you have for example multiple signs shown on this facade. We would allow one. Um, and, and we would also, uh, and again, I'll ask my colleagues and you know, we'll give you further direction when we're finished, but um, a, a blade sign, um, I, I think, would complement this particular area. That would be great. Great. Um, everything else I have, I can wait until we 
chat together as a board. Are there any other questions before I open this up for public? Yeah. Can I ask a couple more? Please, of course. Um, you guys show um, uh, a garden up on the fourth floor uh, on the setbacks there. Uh, is that by each apartment owner or is it uh, by the landlord? Uh, how do you guys get out there? Through the, through the roof and then they'll be able to pop down by, by ladder for water and maintenance. So they go up to the roof and then come back down and into that unit? Yeah. Or outside the unit. Outside the unit? Okay, that's a way I guess. <laughs> um, and that's just a bunch of big, big bushes or trees, right? Not, n not like no low vegetation. Correct. So that's just mainly for the public to see, not like a little roof garden for the penthouse unit there type deal. So it's still a regular, I guess, I'm assuming it's an EPDM rubber roof or some sort of roof there, right? Yep, yep. Okay. We ask them to consider that. I was appreciative that they did it. Okay, I'll just, you know. Um, and then when you come out from the garage on Chandler Street side, is there gonna be a, like a horn or a strobe warning there so you don't, it's not required, right? No, we've got plenty of room there for people. Visibility from the vehicle, number one, nothing too high. And number two, um, you, you know, it's not like the car's just popping out right at the sidewalk, that's why just one it's in yeah, and it's purposefully so but it, by setting the whole thing back it's going to have virtually I believe no impact on the neighbor really and okay. the word I was looking for before was pulley <laughs> believe it or not <laughs> pulley okay yeah, it's a pulley it's, and and so it's a very silent it's like a, a like a rubber rubber band basically and it's very That's quick and very chain. quiet yeah. okay. and lightweight Uh, my last question is, it's an enclosed garage on a lower level, so you're going to have to exhaust the fumes inside. Grease traps, exhaust. Uh, Where are the exhaust louvers? Uh, on the side. Um, if you go to the grade level floor plan, please. Here? Well, is that it right yeah, there? Yeah, we have a, basically, again, this will all get calculated by MEP, but we have all of this surface area to work with to, to for cooling, for condensers, for exhaust from the, uh, uh, et cetera. So um, we, 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 we're, we have a really nice, conveniently located space within which to handle the infrastructure of, of the garage and various other things. Um, how does that line up with the building behind you? Is it in the, does that line up in the parking garage, parking lot in front of that building, or is it at the building? That's in the parking area. It's in the parking area. The building's not very deep. Okay. Uh, it's, it, it's very, yeah, it's well for, if, if you're talking about the existing building, no, it's, it's way forward. I, I realize it's that. It's not going to have any impact, it's not, it doesn't make any noise or anything. It's like actually that. right here. Right. Yep. Uh, but where's the pump? See, there's a building right behind the uh, property line there. Go to, go to the rendering. Yeah, the rendering with a fence yeah. shows it. Yeah. Next. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. so it's pretty far away. Okay. It, it's far away. It's actually, it's, it's actually way over here. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Just didn't want that in someone's window. <laughs> you bad. And I just have one more thing that I. Um, and it's not something that I want that I necessarily need an answer on because again we're not reviewing the interior plans but um, I just want to I know that you're getting a lot more detail here to make sure that um, you've really taken a look at the um, remoteness of your egress access because they they look awfully awfully close together to me and again that's not something that we're going to well I looked at it enough. actually okay, I great. look at it fabulous I did my travel distances there okay yeah, All right, there. but it's a super valid point. I mean, yeah, you know, I just don't want you to go too far. In there. Okay, fabulous. Um, okay, any other questions? All right. At this time, we will open up for public comment. Anyone who would like to um, address the board with any um, comments or questions, 
regarding this application, um, please raise your hand. I'll call on you, and you will have up to three minutes um, to speak. Speak over there. Please, and what I'd love for you to do, if you wouldn't mind, is to please um, come and use the microphone right here. Um, I'll also ask that you please introduce yourself with your first, last name, and address. Feel free to leave your mask on if you're more comfortable, or if you prefer to take it off, that's I don't fine know if you too. Can hear me? I found it kind of hard to hear some of you, so. Okay. Um, we can hear you. Can hear? Yep. Perfect. Great. So thank you. I'm sorry, you wanted my name and address? Please. Yeah, my name is Rachel Roth. I live at 16 Chandler Street. And so I had a couple of uh, things I wanted to raise. Um, one, especially for you, the board, I mean, we know there's a lot of interest in this project and we know there's not very many people here compared to when the meetings were online. And so I, I have written to the board and the department about this. I would encourage you to at least make the meetings hybrid. Um, I understand why you want the big screen and everything, but I think we can all tell this is fewer people who usually come. So I would just say that. Um, so I wanted to say I do appreciate, you know, things like hearing that the garage is going to be quiet and it's not going to have those things that you were asking about. Um, but um, some other things that I'm concerned about. So we are a Butters. I know you've reached out to a couple of my neighbors. We uh, live right next door to one of the people. So I don't know how far you've reached out, but 16 Chandler is basically a stone's throw and no one to my knowledge has reached out to us. Um, I think the whole street is, you know, going to have concerns about the scope of construction and everything. It's definitely going to affect everybody's lives. Um, you were just, the question just came up about noise. So I don't honestly know with all those compressors on the top and the question about the exhaust, I think somebody just said it doesn't make any noise, but um, I know there's been attention to like a lighting study. I'd be curious if there could be some kind of um, a noise study or just some information for people about, you know, it is a very different um, building from what is there now. Um, I also wanted to hear a little bit about um, demolition and construction. Um, so I think the whole building is coming down. Is that correct? Um, so, you know, we had snow last week and at three in the morning, a snow plow came up Chandler and it just dropped the snow blade or did something. So there was a big bang and our whole house shook. So I think that's the, you know, it's not bedrock as far as I know. So obviously there's things that can be done, but I would just like some information about what will demolition be like, what will construction be like in terms of the impact on people's houses from the vibrations. Um, and, you know, generally, like, I think you did show somewhere where the construction um, hub, for lack of a better word, would be. But what is that going to be like when it's happening and all the construction workers are there with their trucks and all the rest of it? Um, so um, those were some things I was concerned about. You know, I um, still think it's, it's great to get one-on-one -on -one feedback and have a community meeting. Um, I also read an article in the Globe, I think it was about all the new independent bookstores springing up. And one of them is in Roslindale. I think this is the, the development where they mentioned it, that the developer asked the neighbors, what kind of business would you like to have in this building? And people said, we'd like a bookstore. And now there's a bookstore. So that might be something to think about getting input on what kinds of businesses would be good for the neighborhood. Um, so thank you. Thank you very much. And so what I will do, I'm going to capture notes from anyone who would like to speak, and then we'll address those items at the end of public comment. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak? Please. Steve will come to you next. Peter Ferguson, 16 Chandler. Um, I'm not sure how you found your butters, but I suggest you do get a new method. Um, I'm not sure if it's provided, but that's regardless. I do have questions that are also about detailed design around the construction and the demolition um, because you did mention you're going down about 24, billion, 24 inches below uh, your elevation that you show on the drawing, correct? Um, to, to put in pilings. I realize you haven't got your structural drawings yet, but the location of your construction entrance to the yard, which I'm sure is going to be enclosed, is it a series of a number of dead ends, uh, I'm sorry, one-way streets? Um, and you're going to be doing a lot of earth removal. 
So there's going to be a lot of trucks coming up and down there. I'd like you to consider, and I'm not sure who does this in the town, can giving them a variance so they can enter off Mass Ave rather than coming trundling up Chandler, um, which would reduce the impact. Um, yeah, look, my questions are really around detailed design. Um, I wish you, you luck. It looks like you, you're trying, um, but I do think you need to try a little hard to reach out to the neighborhood. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Steve Moore, uh, Piedmont Street. Um, I was looking over the uh, detail of the submission, um, the updated package, and um, my first question was, if you could go to the landscape uh, and, and tree planting uh, page, it's down towards the end, where the root balls and things start showing up. There you go. Um, I was looking at this page. Uh, there was a reference on one of the earlier pages to the fact that one tree in front of the building on Mass Ave is going to be uh, retained and protected. It said, look for the protection detail. I, I've gone all the way through it as far as I can tell. There's no tree protection detail. Did I miss it? I was sliding all around on my phone. It was a small screen. I might have missed it. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to, to questions oh, oh, at I'm the sorry. end. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. No, you, that's you okay. That. I just don't want you to use all your time sure. waiting for answers. thank you. Uh, yeah, tree protection detail would be helpful because, from what I can tell, the whole sidewalk is going to be removed as well as all the planters are replaced and built. Um, and I'm not sure how that tree is going to survive that work. Demolition of the building behind it, removal of the sidewalk planters. I assume that tree is probably going to um, die in the process. Now. That doesn't mean it can't be protected, and you can, but it's going to require some protection if you are going to retain that tree and not plant a new one. Um, also, it said one of the questions that was asked by the board, uh, I believe, had to do with irrigation. Um, and it said no, no irrigation, hand, hand watering if necessary. Um, I would strongly suggest you add irrigation to the trees in front of the building. Street trees on a commercial area like this just don't typically survive without a, a good amount of care, specifically sufficient water. Hand watering will probably not be sufficient, um, so I would suggest you add the irrigation to those trees to create the streetscape that is the intent of your plan. Um, and I think that was it from what I could see on the plans. I think that was it. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Uh, anyone else this evening? Okay. So with that, we will uh, close public comment. And um, I just want to circle back on a couple of the items that were brought up by the mm -hmm. residents who, who spoke. Um, so it sounds like a slightly wider radius of, of a butters would be helpful the next time that you have um, a meeting with the uh, residents on Chandler Street who are going to be affected. Um, if you, I don't want to get into a significant discussion on the demolition and construction details here, but if I could ask that you um, follow up with the abutters to provide them with the, the details um, that, that they're seeking, that would be very helpful. Um, if you are able to give some information on the type of mechanical system that you're currently considering so that they understand um, the condenser system, uh, that would be a question that I would ask you to address. Absolutely. I would say um, to uh, the person that's concerned with sound um, that these units are up uh, centered on the roof and way up and just ambient air movement and everything else is almost going to be more noise than the actual units. So that's the good news there. This this building will not require large chillers and that sort of thing. So The, the uh, building's 100% electric, and these are like the mini splits that you would see. Like I even yep. have one outside my house like by my deck. So we're very, you know, take one of those and put it four stories up, up so top. So these are the heat pumps? Yep. Yeah. They're yep. very quiet. They're very quiet. Yeah, I've got them too. You can hardly yep. So. <clears throat> Great, thank you for addressing that. I appreciate it. Um, and about the input from the butters and uh, the tree protection detail. I know that these are still a work in progress. 
um, if that's something that we can add, if it's not, okay, great, thank you. And I'll add that to my notes. Uh, great, so at this time, I'd like to turn it back over um, to the members of the board for um, discussion. Uh, and Jean, I will start with you. You know, I forgot something, but you reminded me. I always ask to, that you put in a couple electric charging stations in the garage. Is that something? Yes. Yeah, we've got six of them. You do. Yeah, I, I think that mandated now. It, not, it, it's well, going to be. It's soon. going to be. I think in some towns it's definitely. It's not. A you guys got to get they're they're all along the back wall there. <laughs> We're doing. Okay. Um, so here are the things I, I sort of want to talk about. Um, the step back. Mm -hmm. um, is there a rear yard? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna discuss that, and 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 this um, proposed loading zone on Chandler Street, and what happens if the town says no to that? Do do, do you know what we would need? On? We would need to go to the select board to request, and I've spoken with the applicant about that, about going to the select board and having a note from the if the board is in. Support, of that we would have a note from the department that indicates that um, as far as a request for like even just like an early hours loading zone for Chandler Street okay thanks but I think we should discuss what happens if they don't get that approved because my fear is that the trucks will park in the MTA you know bus zone right there on this which wouldn't be so great so that, that's the bus rapid, that's the BRT lane, so yeah. they can't park well, there that, during. They can't, but that doesn't mean they wouldn't. I mean, that's they're pretty strict about ticketing that, so they would not do that for yeah, long. Yeah, that's my concern. And, yeah. And, you know, I think we might want to do something to encourage the select board if that makes sense. The other things I'll mention is um, we're allowed to um, authorize up to 20 percent of the parking spaces to be for compact cars, otherwise they're not. And I think you have five compact spaces, I think. Four, I think. I think five, but we can allow up to five compact spaces because 26 spaces, 20 percent is five spaces. And I, I, I think they have three on one floor and two on the other. I hope I count it correctly. We have, I think, three spaces right now. Designated compact. And, and two and two more on three, I thought and then the basic two, yeah, and two correct. so you have five, that's my yeah. so like we would have to approve that. Yeah. But we have to figure out what to do about um there. They have more open space than exists now, but not as much as is yep. on the list. Um if we're okay with the transformer in the buffer zone, um and what to do about the parking, we need to figure out what the tree payment should be for no trees on White Street. Um, I don't. Th I think that's the first time it's come up since the tree bylaw was passed a year or two ago. Um, and um, I don't think I have anything else. And th and then I guess I. Pardon me. And then right. And then will you do one more affordable unit to get the parking relief? Which Makes good sense to me. All right. Well, let's start with um, any other topics for discussion before we dive in. Ken, did you have any to add to that list? I think the issues I had, they all said they will do. Okay. So uh, I don't have any issues. Right. And again, not that these are all issues, but they're all items that we have to find that we are um, in in agreement with. Some of them will be easier than others. Well. The, uh, they're all findings we have to yes and, we have and to agreement. discuss uh, I think Jean and I have different agreements in interpretation I, I interpret that as a side yard because it's a corner lot that's something we'll always have yeah, a, we'll, a we'll, disagreement on we'll get into well, I haven't said what I think about it yet. <laughs> okay I, any, any other items please so um, we because we are um, we are exercising discretion with respect to lot setbacks. Um, yes. I think it's 5316. We'll need to um, talk a little bit about that. I have thoughts, but I'll, I'll wait. 
<laughs> okay. Let's start with the side yard versus rear yard. Sheen, go ahead. Well, I was I was surprised to see that there's no rear yard, and I think <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it's a hole in the regulations in the bylaw. I mean, that it just it's been in the bylaw for a while. <laughs> and it it yeah, and it it hasn't come up. Because how often do we because see... Because how about the zoning here? It, it, it hasn't come up at the ARB where there's something that takes up yeah. three sides but not the entire fourth side of, of the bar. So uh, do you have any... Uh, my reading of the zoning bylaw is that if there are two front yards, you, the property owner can determine which one is the rear yard and which one is the side yard. But in this case, you have three front yards. And so it, the, the zoning bylaw allows for interpretation. And, and my read of it is that they could determine whether the, the non-street facing frontage, or the non-street facing boundary is a rear yard or a side yard. Yeah, see, I think that's true if they're a corner lot, but not if they're a three-sided lot. That's the problem for me is that it's silent. It says if it's a corner lot, which is you know, you have two two sides, then they get to decide. But it's completely silent on who gets to decide when it when it's three sides, and um, and then is there really a rear yard or not? Because if you look at the through lot diagram, there are two fronts and two sides. This is not a through lot, but clearly it's anticipated in some instances that there is no rear yard. So I, you know, so I think this is really interesting. <laughs> and I don't have, I don't have a solution other than we should, admit, we should try to put in a warrant article in a year <laughs> or in the fall to, to figure out what to do if this happens again. But meanwhile, I think the solution is that we do have the authority to adjust required setbacks. So I think whether it's a rear yard or a side yard, we're going to have to do that anyhow because you know they're subject to 5.3.8 having to do with some of the other side yards on the street. So if we want to let them do this, and I think it's a good idea because the current building is up to the lot line, we can make the same decision about the rear yard if we want. So it's important, but I don't think it stops us from making the sure. decision. Yeah, to muddy the, the waters even more, our definition for side yard um, includes a language in the case of a lot having no street frontage or a lot of odd shape, any yard that is not a front yard or a rear yard can be considered a side yard. <laughs> so they contemplate the lack of a rear yard, but for different reasons. Right. So, yeah, so <laughs> or the bylaw does. I just, yeah, just, I think ultimately if we decide that um, we, we can need adjust to decide the whether it's appropriate, right, the currently adjust. proposed right. setback. Yep. Mm -hmm. Do you have feelings on whether or not it's appropriate? I think that I think it's appropriate, personally, and the reason I think it's appropriate is because much of the setback on the other side is the parking lot. You know, to the, those are going. So there is the brick building that's close but it's close to the current building also. So I, I think that um, this, there are special conditions that are unique to this proposal. And they've made the appropriate um, effort to screen and landscape the buffer. Yeah. Okay. Steve, your yeah, thoughts I, on the appropriateness of the setback, whether it is a rear or a side yard? Um, I agree that it's a hole in the bylaw. <laughs> um, I, I think the setbacks are appropriate, and I, I think for me the part of it was just the configuration of, of this, these parcels in the adjacent ones. The fact that we've got two corner parcels, so with three front yards, um, that are directly surrounded by an R6 or an R5 through lot. Um, you know, 
with screening it, as, as Mr. Benson said, I, I think it's appropriate. Ken? Yes. You agree. I agree it's appropriate as well. And we will See, I find, <laughs> we will note the findings Thank is you, that James. whether or not is a rear or side yard. Okay. So um, let's run through some of these other um, items. So um, the request for the five compact park parking spaces, um, I have no issue with. No issue. Steve? No. Okay. Um, the step back. Jean. So, all right. So, as you know, all of you know. We differ. I, I, <laughs> I, I disagree with the rest of you, and I think that um, the seven and a half feet needs to be from the building facade, not from the lot line. And I know I won't be able to convince the rest of you of that. Um, and I say that in part because it says seven and a half feet beginning on the fourth floor, which to me contemplates that that's where it is and it's not like you just pull the building back. However, it's one of those things where the three of you, dis if the three of you continue to disagree with me, I am not going to stop this project by voting no on the step back because we're going to put something in town meeting in the fall to hopefully right. get this resolved. So I disagree, but I'm going to go with the majority if the three of you still are wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I. I Read it as the lot line, Steve. I, I'm okay with reading it as a lot line. Yes. Okay. So we are agreed to disagree on, yes. on that one, but we have, yes, three of us reading it from the lot line, which um, ensures that that is compliant. Okay. So the next item we have is um, the discussion around the open space, the landscape and usable, which is increased from what is existing, but um, obviously they are looking for relief from what is required in the bylaws. And I will start by saying that I, I appreciate that um, more than most of our projects, I that we have seen recently. I feel that the usable open space is actually quite usable <laughs> in this particular in this particular case. Um, and I do appreciate the fact that they have added um, the, um, the the trees and the um, the the green roof elements that we have requested as well, um, which to me um, is helpful in terms of thinking about um, alternative methodologies to meet the intent of that provision. Steve, your thoughts? So I'm, in terms of the standards in section 344 for open space, um, I think this one does a fairly good job at meeting them. Um, you know, base, the bylaw says that open space shall be designed to add to the visual amenities of the vicinity by maximizing its visibility to persons passing or, or overlooking it from nearby structures. The location and configuration shall be designed as to encourage social interaction, maximize its utility, and facilitate maintenance. So this is, this is um, like kind of the business center of, of Capitol Square, and you're giving people a gathering space right in front of um, a, a pair of shops and across from the the Capitol Square building, I, I think that's I think that's a you know that that's a great element in the project. Okay. Great, Ken. Yes, I, I'm uh, in agreement. I, I'm okay with giving them relief on the open space. Jean. I am too. Um, I think that if. I am because the current building has much less open space, and I don't see how they're going to put anything in meaningfully without us giving them some relief from the open space requirement. And as some of the rest of you said, it's, it's reasonably usable open space. 
The landscape is reasonably good. They're doing some green roof pieces, so I think it's appropriate to give them relief from it. Great. Um, the next item I have here is um, related to the parking reduction. Um, so they have provided the start of a TDM and have requested to work through that further with the um, Department of Planning and Community Development um, as a condition of the permit. Jean, you've suggested that they um, add an additional affordable unit um, to reduce the parking further so that we only have one space that we're looking to provide relief for. Right. I, I would say they need one TDM for the commercial. commercial and then something else for the residential. And as I said, I don't think the two that they've come up with are enough. Richard, can I comment on that? Please. But I think, let me just think. Sure. But I think if they got one more um, affordable unit, which is an incentive in the zoning bylaw to allow, to allow a reduction in the parking, then I think it's okay to just give them the relief from the one remaining space now that we figured out the correct number of, of residential spaces that they need. And, and you know, we just last year the town meeting reduced the number already, so I think we're almost there. So that's my thought. And I just wondered if you would be willing to add one more affordable unit. I think we would be. So just to right. make sure I understand, it's one TDM for residences, one. one for a commercial space, which I'd still like to be to be determined. To, to be determined. And then one more for the unit. And, so, yep, that would be great. We anticipated that. I had a note from John earlier. Can I come on that? I asked that very question. <laughs> Please. I think differently on that, Gene. Um, you're asking for another affordable unit. I'm glad they're willing to do that, okay? I'm not, not saying that, okay? But I was willing to go a little differently than what your request was. I was okay to give them a relief on the, a number of parking because the fact that what they did was we had asked them to get rid of the tandem parking and increase the commercial space on the first floor. We asked them to do that. They did that, and I was willing to give them a break on the required parking because they did that. But they didn't reduce the number of parking spaces. No. That's Anyhow, okay. they, they've agreed to do this. So. Well, no, that's based on what you said. And uh, I differ from you okay. in that opinion. And I, 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 I just want to express the fact that, that why I differ is because the fact that we asked them to do something and they did it by getting rid of the tunnel spaces and increased the ground floor commercial space. And they did that and now we're asking for more. And I, I just don't want to come across that way. And that's what I want to make. I think that's a fair as, as a fair statement. statement. And right or wrong, if and I'm, I'm not telling them not to do it, but I'm just stating that was my opinion. And that's what I wanted to express, and okay. it's different from yours, and that's okay. Steve, your thoughts on the parking? Um, I general. My general feeling is that we tend to overpark or require more, more parking than necessary. Um, I would have given them the relief anyway, just as um, you know. This, you know, aside from you know, for reducing the reducing the cost of, of the of the project, and also because of its location, um, it's near the Minuteman. It's a shot. It's a relatively easy ride to Alewife, and Alewife, aside from having the T station, also has a number of shuttle bus companies that serve, like Route Three and One Twenty Eight. Um, there's a whole, you know, the whole One Twenty Eight corridor. Uh, a lot of there's a, there's a good number of people who get there by hopping on a, a private shuttle at Alewife. Um, so because of the the combination of, you know, mainly that. Mainly the other transit options available. I'd be, yeah. That that's basically 
I, I think it's it's enough. There's enough transit oriented stuff around that uh, a parking reduction would be reasonable for that reason. Right. And and I actually agree with Ken and Steve. You know, again, I think if um, they want to add another affordable unit, that something that they can certainly decide to do. But I would not personally make it a requirement because I feel that they've um, they meet the they they are in one of the most transit friendly parts of Arlington and they they did meet our request to reduce their parking by taking out the tandem um, in return for increasing the commercial space so um, it sounds like the consensus would be that the board would not require you to add the additional I don't know if that's what the board's thinking. I, I under I understand Unless that. So agreed to do it. Then, then right, and I that's that's something that we can share. Um, we this is a vote that would need three members of the of the board. Um, so that's a decision that you as a team will need to make as to whether or not you would like to add the additional affordable unit or. I, I think not. if we were to ask the client, the client would say no. We would not like an extra affordable unit. We're going. Uh, to great lengths as as we are right now. Correct. Uh, the uh, see what Gene is uh, proposing, and I you know, I laud the proposal in terms of having one more affordable unit in that building. But I think if I would oppose the question to the client, the client would say we'd rather not do that. Why? Because we are uh, basically. Uh, basing our plans on economics sure. and uh, economics come into play with respect to having one more affordable unit uh, so I think that's 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 the response I would get from the client I'm sure. understood uh, let's see and the last there are two other items um, one is the loading zone on Chandler Street um, my feeling is that we would need to make um, that a condition of the of the permit to work through the designation of a loading zone on Chandler Street with the select board. Um, there's, you know, really nothing else that we can. So, can if, do the, if the select board says no, then the project says no. No. Oh, okay. It's just the prompts that they're going to work with the select yes, board. Yes, correct. That's it. Right, and that we will. Um, we will communicate to the select board our support of, of a loading zone. Of a loading zone. I have no problem with that. Okay. I will say that we started that process. Okay. Before with the last project, or Jenny did. Great. And it was received well. Great. She started that. It's great. But you try again. Well, we have to start over. But <laughs> Super. Um, and then the last item was re with regard to a um, whether or not a treat we would require a um, payment to the Arlington Tree Fund in lieu of placement of trees on on Lake Street. Um, Steve, what are your thoughts on that particular item? Oh. Because they currently do not have shade trees. Well, we do have trees, however, on the green roof area, correct? Not trees. Yeah, we have trees. trees. Call them bushes. We'll call Big them bushes. bushes. Okay. They're, they're Arbor Vitae type. Right, they're not shade trees. Um, but we don't have any precedent, correct, Kelly, for determining the contribution to the tree fund what I'm what I would interpret is that under computation even though this is about rounding up on trees or rounding down um, I would say it's in an amount equivalent to the full and fair market value of the additional tree yep um, and so I would I would use that as a cue for what this amount should be if we're talking okay. about two trees I'm in, support of that. I'm in support of that. Great. Paying a, paying a fee for the two trees. The two trees. Okay. Any other discussion on that? Gene? Steve? No. Okay. You would be amenable to that? All right. 
Um, so let me run through the list. I think I got everything. Was there anything else in terms of findings that we needed to review as a board? Okay. I'm going to run through the list of open questions um, that I have, and we can discuss whether or not this is um, something that we would want the applicant to come back um, to um, to share progress with us, or whether or not we would want to defer this to administrative approval. Um, the first is um, seeing a sample of the the lighter material. Um, we only had the darker with us this evening. I could literally get you that in about a minute and a half if that is helpful. I, I don't want to rush it, but. But yeah, let's. I mean, I, I really would like to see it, yeah, but no, let's I, um, I have it. <laughs> let's let's see if uh, that becomes a material Got it. Uh, piece of importance. Um, second is to ensure the solar panels are far enough from the edge of the roof so that a guardrail is not required. Um, the fourth was, uh, the, excuse me, the third was uh, to swap the living room and uh, bedroom in the planned southeast corner of the building. Um, the next is um, to show the bark bike parking interior enclosure with controlled access. The next is to change the specification on the bike rack to a mechanical assist rather than uh, a physical lifting of the bike for the upper rack. Um, we talked about the um, payment to the Arlington Tree Funds in lieu of two trees on Lake Street um, and adding one additional tree on Chandler, Chandler near the transformer. Um, the next is to provide a specification for the light fixtures and a light um, lighting plan uh, in the area of the open parking. Um, the next is with regard to signage, and again, we are not approving any signage as part of this plan, but when you do look at um, your requirements for building for tenant signage to look at a, a blade sign and limiting the number of signs on each side of the building, per the signage bylaws per tenant. Um, returning the brick at the uh, rear facade of the building, or side facade, depending on how you speak about that. Uh, the uh, Adding a tree protection plan to the site plans and um, to reach out to a wider uh, radius of abutters um, to discuss the demolition and construction details um, in any other questions that they might have. Did I miss anything? No. Anything else? But to answer your question, I'm happy with the stuff you listed there as administrative approval. Um, I trust uh, that I'm making the building lighter. That's the only big issue I had, making it lighter, and I trust. Well, we can make power. that conditional to the the final review and approval of the coloration um, of the of the materials um, but that's not gonna hold them up for another review right no we could we could do that we could if they submitted them I could even bring them into a future yeah, we've hearing. done that with other okay I'm okay with before. that then. okay Jean I'm fine with all those. okay mm -hmm. fine with those okay we uh, can agree with all those items you and you would agree yeah, to all of those items we can agree with them. okay all right so um, I'm going to run through our findings and then I will run through um, special conditions that we will add to the permit, um, or excuse me, to the, um, to the decision so that we can um, have a motion created. So um, we can find that the reduction of the parking is acceptable um, given the uh, agreement to work with staff on the TDM and the reduction or the removal of the tandem parking spaces. Um, we have uh, found that the step back um, from the lot line is, um, is uh, approved. We are, we are finding that the um, setback on the non-street frontage side of the building is appropriate 
per the uh, zoning bylaw guidelines, we are finding that the um, five compact parking spaces and the reduction to allow those um, is approved. Uh, we can also find that the um, proposed open space, both landscape and usable, um, is, is approved. And we are finding that the uh, two trees on Lake Street um, that are not being provided can be um, instead supplemented with a um, donation to the Arlington or payment to the Arlington Tree Fund in the amount of the fair market value of two trees. So this is the finding. And um, I would like to see if there is a motion to, sure. sorry. Um, one um, small friendly Please. amendment to Please. the uh, tra to the um, finding regarding parking. Yes. Um, could we add proximity to non-automotive transit um, resources? Yes. To public transportation. Yes. Oh, well, non-automotive. Right. Right. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Bikeways. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, so, any other changes, amendments to the findings? No. Okay. So, is there a motion to uh, approve docket number 3650 for 190 to 200 Mass Ave with the conditions of um, the applicant submitting a um, final package of full package of um, exterior building material samples um, to the uh, department and the board for uh, review and approval, um, ensuring that the solar panels are far enough from the edge of the roof so that the guardrail, so that guardrails are not required, um, to ensure that the bark, bike, the interior bike parking enclosure um, is protected um, with an enclosure and controlled access that the specification of the uh, bike rack uh, will be a um, one with a mechanical assist rather than a requirement for physical lifting of the bike. Um, that in lieu of providing the two trees on Lake Street, that a payment isn't made in the amount of the fair market value of two trees to the Arlington Tree Fund. That one additional tree is added um, to Chandler Street from what is shown on the plan, that a light fixture schedule is submitted to the department um, for the open parking area. Uh, our standard conditions include notation that the signage is not currently approved, that that will need to be approved under a separate permit. The applicant will provide a tree protection plan and the applicant will also endeavor to reach out to um, a wide radius of abutters, including those on Chandler Street, to discuss demolition and construction details. Any other special conditions? We have our standard conditions, which include trash snow removal, and... trash removal, restrictions and timing, et cetera. Is there a motion? So a motion. I have a question. Do Please. you want to give? Um, the staff any guidance about what we'd like to see in the TDM for the commercial space and what we'd like to see in the TDM for the residential space. So for, um, although the jury is still out on unbundling, I know a number of transportation <laughs> nerds yeah, transportation um, nerds agree. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, so I, I would like to go to to stick with un, with unbundling. Um, hmm. Come back done, to me. I've done that in the past. Uh, unbundling the uh, the rent from the, the rent of the parking has reduced the number of parking uh, just because. You have to pay more to have one that you may not use all the time. Uh, it just becomes something to jettison. 
and for uh, commercial, again, I, I think it does dep depend on the, 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 the type of um, business that you have there, but um, you know, whether it's providing um, transit passes for employees, um, let me pull up what our, Steve, you have our list yes. up, I can see. Yeah, the stipend for um, for uh, transit pass subsidies, and um, you know we we have provided uh, bicycle parking, and they have provided a significant number of EV spaces as mm -hmm. as well, which I know is not I know it's not required, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, I mean I was. Yeah, if it were a surface, if it were surface parking, I did, I would ask the applicants to consider trying to partner with a uh, a car sharing company, Zipcar or whatever. But I'm with the with the garage enclosure. I'm not sure that would be a practical. Yeah. Those yeah. are miserable to. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then you'd have to give them another space. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other thoughts on the TDM? Guidance yeah. on the TDM. Okay. Any other um, amendments before we look for a motion? All right. Is it, is it, do I hear a motion? So motion. Second. A second. All right. We'll take a roll call vote, starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. No. Uh, Ken. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. So I would just like to put on the record why I'm saying no. Um, I think it's a good project. I think it's one that is going to help the town. Um, it's what the town has envisioned for Mass Ave. It has, um, helps with commercial space. It helps with uh, residential space. I'm voting no because I think the reason the board has reduced the number of residential parking spaces does not meet the criteria of the zoning bylaw. Basing it on things like getting rid of tandem parking and doing some other things we asked are completely unrelated to um, whether the number of parking spaces should be reduced for. I think that one more affordable unit would have been a much better way to do it. And the town needs a lot of affordable units. And I'm just very, very disappointed that we're not going in that direction. And that's why I have voted no for something that I otherwise think is a very nice project and very good work by everyone who's here. And thanks to all the neighbors who commented during the process. Thank you. I'll just note as well that um, in addition to the um, reduction of the tandem parking that um, the other board members did specifically note the proximity to non-automotive transit. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Steve. Good luck with your project. Thank you. We're going to make Thanks. it nice, I promise. All right. Uh, that concludes our first agenda item. And we will now move to... Thank you. Thank you. So on We'll now move to agenda item number two, which is the open space and oh, sorry, recreation Steve, plan update. Oh, a nice sample board. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Just give everyone a minute to. Thank you. All right. So let's now move to um, agenda item number two, which is the open space and recreation plan update. And I believe that we have um, an update to the work of the committee. Um, my name is Wendy Richter, and I am the uh, designee from the ARB on the Open Space Committee. I also am now uh, co-chair of the committee, because we've changed. Uh, Ann LaRoyer is going to continue on the committee, but she's no longer the chair. So um, we thank you for your support in the development of this um, open space plan, open space and recreation plan, which you, I think it was in the summer that you approved it, and it's now, um, it's now in print. 
<laughs> have a copy Fabulous. here. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. And um, you should have access to this. It's also online, which is really uh, e actually easier than having it in hard copy. Um, there are a number of um, items, action items, in the implementation of this plan that um, the ARB is listed as, as one of the um, parties involved. And I, um, we're hoping that you are familiar with the plan, and especially those, um, and I just looked it up, I have them here, there's six items that have ARB after them. And I don't know whether you've had a chance to look at the plan or not. Would you like me to read those items? They're short. Sure, go ahead. I, yes, please. I, I don't really have another, pre you know, you know no, about that's the plan. No, that's fine. We reviewed that before. So I yeah. should just let you know what they are. Sure. Um, so the implementation uh, is in a chart at the end of the, of the plan and um, under um, goals. The first goal is to ensure that public and private investments support and build upon the town's recreational facilities, conservation areas, and other public spaces. And under that um, goal, um, ARB, and this is ongoing, so this should already be familiar, um, Explore future development and redevelopment projects, particularly those within environmental justice communities, to incorporate meaningful open spaces and recreation opportunities on site for residents. Walking and biking connections should be prioritized to nearby recreational facilities, conservation areas, and other public spaces. So that's the first one. The next one is under um, the second 2B objective. Um, to improve the town sidewalk streets and recreational corridors to make them safer and more accessible to all users. And that's to continue to implement um, Connect Arlington to increase multimodal opportunities in town and address safety, access, and efficient, efficiency of walking, biking, and transit use, particularly around town public spaces and recreational areas. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. And I guess I did them out of order because those okay. are under the second goal. I'm going through a tablet, uh, so it's not always doesn't always go back to the beginning. Um, let me just make sure I'm at the yeah. Okay, so I'll start with the first one. Um, so the uh, objectives improve the quality and functioning of the town's waterways and wetlands to support aquatic life and biodiversity. So the first one ARB is listed under is um, continue to implement strategies from the Millbrook Corridor Report to expand public access and restore and enhance the natural features of the corridor, such as Cook's Hollow, which is um, under study right now. Um, next one is to protect undeveloped lands that have ecological value, wildlife corridor connections, and habitats for native flora and fauna or that present opportunities to restore natural systems. And that is to enforce the conditions of the Zoning Board of Appeals 2021 decision on Thorndike Place, the Mugar property, regarding establishment of a perpetual conservation restriction on the designated 12-acre conservation parcel. Now, we know where that is in process, but that's been an objective of the open space um, plan. For It was in the last plan as well. Yeah, let's see. And these are the last two. And this is under the goal, um, ensure that public and private investments support and enhance the resilience of the town's natural environment. Um, so 1D3 is use native and pollinator friendly vegetation appropriate for an urban environment in town landscaping projects, including more curbside rain gardens, focus along the Mass Ave corridor and other commercial streets. And it was nice to see that trees were mm -hmm. discussed in, in the project I saw presented. And then the last one is review town policies and regulations to ensure that they include climate impact considerations on natural systems and their ecological functions and identify updates as needed. So um, just keep the open space in mind. This is a, um, it's now public policy. That's why we do these open spaces and we're working on, there's a lot to be implementing over the next few years. So um, sort of we all have our role in having that carried out. And um, I guess I wanna say as the um, liaison with the ARB, I've 
often not quite known what my role was. I've attended many meetings that were around zoning. I feel like that's often the um, uh, the point of you know overlap between op open space and and uh, ARB. So I would like you all, if there's something that's coming up, it would be great. And I know David um, is often the one that will he'll high, you know he'll let me know. He'll flag something if it's coming up. But if there's some something that you see as being relevant to open space, please let me know or let the the um, committee know so that we can participate or you know be present in your deliberations. So going forward. So thank you so much for coming tonight. Yep, I um. I think one of the things that the board has really been talking about is how to ensure that the open, so there's obviously public open space and the private open space. And the private open space and many of the um, projects that we see to ensure that that is really truly usable for the, for the residents yes. and programmed such that it's um, you know, space that really can be um, used by those people who are especially in those denser neighborhoods. Um, as opposed to um, just checking a checking a box to you know really make sure that it's something that will enhance the, the lives of the, the residents that it serves. Um, Kim, any thoughts for for Wendy or questions? Do you, do you guys talk about sidewalks at all? Well, we talked about accessibility in terms of accessing uh, open spaces. So in that regard, it is in the plan. Um, one of the things that I think that sort of came out of this pandemic is this kind of summary um, extension of restaurant spaces out into the sidewalk. That kind of lively space, uh, neighborhood street. I think that's something that we should encourage more of. I think it's a good thing, and see how we can, I don't know, leverage that and and, and do more of that because I think that adds. Uh, to the cityscape, cityscape along the, the street there, and then one of my pet peeves is the brick on the sidewalk. It's just a trip hazard right now, and, and to me, it's very uncomfortable. Maybe in front to walk of the town, on to town hall block. Is that the yes, right in front of the the library and the right. town hall yeah, and know. that church. It's just it's just awful there, and I've actually seen a woman trip. And hit her head there, and uh, I just scold my son for sitting laughing. But you know, uh, it, it's not funny. No, it's, it's, it's dangerous. A, yeah. It's so in very bad condition. That's all I have to say. Jean. I mean, yeah, I agree, and it's right by you know the Robbins Memorial Garden, an open space. So the town has this you know beautiful garden between town hall and the library, and you have to walk on this brick sidewalk that's undulating with clips missing and some spaces filled in with little sort of dabs of asphalt. And, and uh, yeah, it, it's sort of pretty sad. It's pretty sad looking. The one thing I wanted to mention, when, I think you came with Anne, right? When Anne, were you here with Anne when Anne presented I may not have been. So Anne presented the open space plan to us. Anne. Yeah, no, I wasn't. Okay, in the summer. And, and one of the things that I said was, I think the town needs to look at um, whether the open space is doing the job for all the various ethnic groups in town. And you know, I gave an example of that I used to give when I used to teach planning and land use law about, well, you have a park, you know, and, and how are you going to design it and things like that. And it turned out nobody in the class ever thought, well, who's, who's in the neighborhood? And, and maybe people play cricket or maybe people play soccer and things like that. And there are no cricket pitches in town. And soon after that, I was walking on the bike path by the fields at Spy Pond, and there were a group of people who had set up cricket and were playing cricket on the baseball. And I've seen them there a few times since. So I think that's just a little example of the town needing to think or adjust the uses of open space to who's now living in the town. 
Great point. I, I think they are doing that with when they're whenever they're working on a field or something. It's the multi-use is is uh, you know they. But multi-use is usually baseball, football, or soccer. Yeah. Not always. We're, we, I mean, we're, we're hoping that it's going to be more, especially looking so at too. Hills Hill. Um, that's yeah, well, one that's that we're whole ho separate. hoping to have. Yeah, there'll be hopefully more than one use there. So, um, I just want. Can I address Please. the um, uh, sidewalk issue? I feel like the sidewalk issue. It's kind of like potholes. It's it's like the space is there. We have no jurisdiction over that. That's something that's uh, town public works. Public works. Um, it's something that, uh, yeah, it is. And I mean, it's, if you think it's an issue, I mean, it's it's an accessibility issue for anybody. If you're tripping on it, it doesn't. You don't have to be in a wheelchair to right. have a problem with that. So, and I think they did address that when they worked on uh, the corridor in East Arlington. They did not put in sidewalks for that reason. And when they redid right in front of Town Hall, that part is fine. You know, right in front of the entrance, the Town Hall. Right. Like I think that's sides. a wire cut flat right. brick. Yeah. Right. And what did they do here? Because I come in the side door, so did this get re-bricked? Yeah, I think this yeah. also was the wire cut. Okay, flat, so, yeah, brick as opposed to the historic. The city hall is a heated plaza too. Yes. Oh, was it? I didn't know. That. Yes. <laughs> uh, any? Did you? Have any I have things? one other thing, and I feel like this is. Can I take the open space? And put, just this is my own personal Please. coming to. It's part of why I'm on open space. Sure. I feel like the issue of density. Is, is huge and I know a lot there's a lot being talked about that as more um, density is happening in town and I would like to see a good dialogue with the open space committee and the ARB around issues that come up with as density increases because I feel like the more especially around residential density the more you need the public open spaces for people who don't have backyards right. so I just see that as something that's coming and there'll be there's going to be a lot talked about around that as we increase uh, you know density so. absolutely it's a really good point and it's something that I think before um, it looks like some of the Warren articles that we had initially been planning for Springtown meeting will actually push to the fall and I think um, engaging with the open space mm -hmm. um, committee as we move toward that is is something that would, and would be I, I see I see Mass Ave as a big open space. It's not a green space, mm -hmm. but it is. And as if there are trees, if there are rain gardens, it becomes. And I think that the what you're talking about those pocket, um, what did they call those um, it parklets? Parklets. 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 Um, it's turning it more into something that people perceive as a green street streetscape as opposed to just tra uh, transit corridor. Right. right. So. Steve, did you have questions or comments? Oh, yeah, a, f a few comments. One of the, the things I've read recently is um, the city of Somerville did a, a, a curb survey. So the, basically it's a survey of how, of uh, what type of uses there are on the curb, who the users are, what they're doing. And, you know, yes, you're, they're, they're weighing off a bunch of different things. So uh, one is things, one is parking, one is um, accommodating bicycle lanes and other forms of transit. Other is having public open space for residents. Another is um, loading areas and drop off areas. Um, it's, it's a very cool document. <laughs> um, I wish we could do something like that here and maybe at some point we will, but um, there's, I, I guess one of, one of my sort of high level thoughts is that we probably devote too much space to cars and I'd be, you know, I'm, I'm interested in ways where, um, maybe we could rethink that balance, but sometimes like, especially on public rights of way, we really don't have much in the way of jurisdiction. So do you, what is that called? It's, you said it's a curb study? Yeah, so... Um, that might be something to look for. Yeah, if you were to go to go to search the fine web for Somerville curb study, okay. um, you, you should be able to find it. <laughs> okay. Anything else for us, Wendy? Yep. I think that was Thank it. Thank you so much for coming in this evening. I really You're appreciate welcome. it. You're and welcome. we look forward to continuing to work together with you. Great. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Great. Um, 
We'll now move to our third agenda item, which is EDR application review, and I'll turn it over to Kelly. Sure. Um, so I just wanted to thank you for taking a look at the revised EDR application. Um, Jean provided some comments. I don't know if anyone else has any feedback, but basically what we're trying to do is take some of the common oversights that have happened as part of application review and kind of clar clarify the process by which we review making sure that applications are complete before we schedule hearings. Um, and then what we're intending to do with this now that I have some feedback and you're welcome to provide additional feedback and, and we can keep updating this, um, but to have this be, have the application that you saw as a draft be our primary application for like redevelopment or development and then create two smaller sub applications from that and one would be for signs so for anybody who's looking for just a sign permit um, through the ARB and then the second one would be for um, for a change of use because that's another smaller type of review that you often end up doing but just to kind of make sure that the goal with all of this is to make sure that people are submitting a full set of materials that we're keeping it up to date as the zoning bylaw is amended and um, just making sure it's clear that the various steps in the process are clear to applicants so it was just a note to um, thank you all and if there were any additional feedback any additional comments i'm happy to take those now i'm also happy to take comments in the next week or so great i have one please i'm sorry to get the earlier that's right um i want to add in that when applicant is showing their elevation yeah uh, of their building that they also would show the elevation of their neighbors so, uh, the, so there's a comparison across everybody just shows their building mm -hmm. and that's it they don't show the uh what's next door yeah uh, so okay context yes yeah. anything else gene kelly did a really nice job thank you yes it's much clearer Steve. i i agree it's uh it, i have not had i will try to get you some com some feedback i did not have a chance quite have the chance to do it yesterday so that's okay and i will as well okay. i'm uh still fighting with my email access yeah, <laughs> in no town problem. so as soon as i have that i will do oh, that don't get me started on that <laughs> one there oh i finally figured it out oh, we'll talk after this okay uh anything else for kelly on the edr application review all right, thank you so much for putting that together. So we'll move to agenda item four, which is the schedule for 2023 annual town meeting. I'll give it back yeah. to you. So this was just, um, just to confirm with you all, we've reduced the total number of hearings to two. Um, so next week, Monday, we have three amendments, or sorry, four that will be before the board. One is a citizen petition from Kristen Anderson regarding animal daycare use. And the next three are the more administrative type amendments um, for stormwater, the, the level of stormwater that should be retained for an additional height bonus in the industrial districts, um, incorporating the solar bylaw into the industrial district zoning now that that's been approved by the attorney general, and then um, updating that minor update to um, section 3.1B um, based on the attorney general feedback. And then the following week, is um, those are the other three citizen petitions. So the two from James Fleming regarding downtown business parking minimums and one and two family usable open space. And then um, the third being from Tom Perkins regarding building affordable housing anywhere. Um, and I know that he has reached out to some of us with regard to some feedback and he'll be coming back with the main motion and for a discussion on that date. Um, we have two dates held right now so march 20 and march 27 um, those were held in the case that we would have more zoning amendments um, right now we don't have any pending applications for those dates um, and i actually don't think given that it is the 27th of february it's too late for any other applications to pop up so um the legal ad for this noted that the ARB would be voting, deliberating and voting on the amendments on, May, on April 3, and then coming back to review and approve the report to town meeting on April 7, um, or sorry, that following Thursday. So I think with that schedule in mind, we probably wouldn't have any 
And unless there were other things that you wanted to bring in for he meetings on the 20th or 27th. I guess that's the question I have mm -hmm. is, would it be, if we're meeting on the 6th and the 13th, yeah. would it be better to meet on the 27th and then the 3rd, right, rather than trying to squeeze in the Thursday evening meeting on the 6th? Um, because we t we don't have to turn it around in three days That's because true. we have a little bit more time. So this yeah. is more a question for you and you know what would be better for you because I know that that is often a Crunch fast period. turnaround. Yeah. I will need to check and see since it was provided in the legal notice this okay. way. Okay, if we if, can't, if yeah. we're allowed to or not. Okay. Did, did you send us this? I don't remember seeing this. Um, I don't, yeah, know. I, don't, I don't think this was a... I think you voted to approve no, no. the articles, but we didn't... Um, that didn't, didn't come. I don't that think I said come. it. No, no I'll send this. Yeah, sorry. Uh, other thoughts on timing, Steve? Um, I mean, in terms of... I, I have sort of two unrelated questions. Sure. Um, since we have... We have two whole evenings that have opened up. <laughs> um, is there any word on uh, the applica applicant for 99? And um, at some point, I, at some po at a point in the past, we had talked about meeting with the economic development coordinator and possibly the um, Beth Lock, yes, the chamber, yes, the chamber. So 99 Mass Ave is scheduled to come back on March 6th. So that's the first thing that's oh, going to okay. happen on the 6th. Um, I'm working to find out when DJ's available based on his other schedule. Um, so we had tentatively scheduled that for February, but it didn't work. We couldn't get both of them on the same date. So if you're open to it, I can figure out which of those dates works and we can have them come in and we can talk about a few other projects and perhaps invite some other, like some of the other boards, liaisons to boards and committees, um, and do some of that business then. We, the other final thing that we haven't scheduled is a public hearing to revise the ARB rules and regulations now that we have the solar the solar bylaw. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then we have to do something with the waiver of fees? Yes, yeah. So just looking at timing-wise, if we didn't meet on the 20th now because we don't need right. to, if we could maybe shoot for the 27th, um, that would allow us to do those items and that way if we are able to change this such that we can um, review the final yeah um, the final um, memo to town meeting on the 27th and then vote on it on the third that might <laughs> be a little easier on on you um, but if we can't we can still then have a short meeting on the third and then we'll need to meet again it sounds like on the sixth the, the one other proposal would be that potentially on the sixth if we, if we meet in person to deliberate and vote on the third we could consider doing that meeting on the sixth to review and discuss the report virtually if okay. that would if that would either, be honestly, interest, either one is fine. whatever's easier for, you for me. But. I'd like to also um, suggest I know when this uh, board voted to establish the working group for MBTA communities, you asked for frequent updates as much as we could. I think we could probably deliver an update on one of those evenings. Perfect. Yeah. All right. So it sounds like we will. It's too short. <laughs> eliminate <laughs> the meeting on the twentieth. Yeah. And then. Um, 27th target um, an economic development discussion either that one or on the third and then on whatever other one to do the MBTA communities sounds good too. yeah perfect I'm assuming you'll send that out right I didn't write so what down. dates will no. we be meeting in March then the 6th and 13th are our two hearing dates yes. and the 27th um, would be either economic development or MBTA communities. And if we can review the um, memo to town meeting that night, we would do that. 
um, and actually we need to vote, right? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's when we would need to vote as well. And then that would give Kelly um, a week so that we could meet again on the 3rd to vote to a approve the... So we meet every Monday in March, except... Except the 20th. The 20th, got it. And are we voting tonight on, on anything? No? Oh, okay. Okay. Any other thoughts on schedule? Since we put in all of the warrant articles, at some point we have to vote something on all the ones we're not going forward with, don't we? That is true. We had said that last yeah. time we yeah. were going to vote tonight oh. to officially right. officially vote to move them. Um, recommend or to move those to fall town oh. meeting. Right. Right, we need to have a And I didn't put it on the agenda. So let me, uh, we'll put it on the agenda for the 20. Uh, sorry for the six. Because okay. don't we have yeah. right, and then we, then we have yeah. to recommend the option on the, on the right. right. Okay. Yeah. Kelly, did, did did you get any information from the manager's office about whether or not they were going to put the three sort of administrative ARB articles on the consent agenda, or are they going? That's going to be up to the moderator, okay. so we won't know that for a little bit yet. Until the until the substance of the main motion is determined. We have a new moderator now, right? We do. It's same still Greg year. from oh, last year. I knew it as Steve. Greg. Greg. No, but Greg's new. He's here. Yeah, he was here he, new he, last year. Yes. Last year was his first. Yes. I. No my. Okay. <laughs> I knew the guy before that. John. 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 Sorry. Okay. Um. So that is our schedule, uh, agenda item number four. Um, now we'll move to agenda item number five, which is open forum. Steve, did you have anything you wanted to yes. share with us? Fantastic. So you know the drill, first, last name, and address. Uh, Steve Moore, uh, Piedmont Street. Um, uh, you guys have gone to live meetings. You're not doing hybrid, and I'm wondering if you could explain why that is when so many other boards are, as part of this pilot, doing hybrid meetings. Sure, I'm happy to answer that. I'm actually on the remote participation mm -hmm. study. Great. Yeah. So um, we have identified that the um, it is working well for some folks who are trying hybrid meetings and not for others. And for the folks that it's working well for, are those who typically are not seeing, um, uh, conducting hearings um, on behalf of the town and don't um, need a large staff support in order to run the hybrid meeting right. like we would need. Mm -hmm. So we have a challenge both with our room and some of the audio issues that we mm -hmm. have in this particular room and the technology. And we also have a challenge where we would need a third staff person to adequately run um, a hybrid meeting because of the way that mm -hmm. because of the volume of information that we have and admitting folks back and forth and we we had a, a pretty lengthy discussion around um, whether or not that was something that um, we felt that we could um, bring into this particular board and um, you know in speaking with various folks within the town from the technology department, they agreed that there is a currently a technology challenge for us to be able to adequately staff and um, support in the space that we are a hybrid meeting. So we feel that it's important to um, work together in person with our applicants for the best experience, both for the applicants, the people who um, participate from the board, from staff, and from um, the, the, the folks from the town who, who come here to participate. Well, I, I guess I would uh, suggest that one of the things we've learned from COVID is that participation has gone up dramatically with the use of the hybrid approach. And as evidenced by tonight and the lack of, well, the very few public people who are part of this, um, that that has gone back to not a lot of participation. 
Um, I would guess that probably the amount of uh, demand for the board's time is e equal to the ZBA, and the ZBA seems to be um, functioning quite well under the hybrid approach. I'll just say that um, we're not going to debate whether or not this no, no, is the no. right decision or not, but we, we very much feel strongly that meeting in person is, is the best experience for us. Um, we have had extremely high turnouts for some of our in-person meetings um, for several of our cases, obviously not tonight, but for our prior meetings, and it has actually been a really wonderful experience to be able to be in the room and face-to-face -face with the residents Agreed. when we're working through Are really um, sometimes very emotional and um, very uh, items that um, it really requires that kind of a personal connection and empathy um, in terms of mm -hmm. ensuring that the applicants as well as the residents understand each other and where each other are coming from. There is a, a lot more um, empathy and I feel that we've been able to come to um, solutions that um, are, are um, that really help modulate between the interests of the residents and the business owners um, in a way that we have had a very challenging time connecting and being able to do that remotely. So that's that's all I'm going to yeah. say on, well, on that well, particular Well, fair issue. enough, fair enough. And I appreciate you laying that out for me because I agree that in-person meetings are better than remote as long as the crowds come back. Because I remember there was huge demand before uh, in person. Yes. And that was wonderful because you really got this cross-section. Right. So thank you for filling me in Absolutely. on Absolutely. I appreciate it. Thank if you. If it comes up again, I would ask you to consider it. But thank you. I got it. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming this evening. Sure. All right. Um, and so with that, I will close um, open forum and open up agenda item number six, which is uh, the meeting minutes. So we will... Uh, first of all, I'll thank everyone who sent um, comments ahead of time. Um, we'll move first to the January 23rd, 2023 uh, draft meeting minutes. Um, and I will see if anyone has any additional comments into what was already um, submitted, starting with Ken. No. Jean? No. Steve? No. And mine are already submitted as well. Um, so is there a motion to approve the meeting minutes from January 23rd as amended? So motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. We'll start, take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean? Yes. Ken? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. So those meeting minutes have been approved. We'll now move to the February 6, 2023 draft meeting minutes. Um, several comments were submitted ahead of time, so I'll see if Ken has any additional comments. No. Jean? No. Steve? Nothing here. And I don't either. Kelly, thank you so much for integrating all of those. Um, and I'll see if there's a motion to approve the February 6, 2023 meeting minutes as amended. So motion. Second. I uh, will take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Those have been approved. Thank you. I'll get back to my agenda. Um, we're now on to agenda item number seven, new business. Kelly, did you have yes. anything? Fabulous. Um, so I think I may have mentioned this before, but on March 1, um, Talia Fox, our sustainability manager, and a number of other local experts are running a virtual town forum on the specialized, the specialized stretch code versus the stretch code. So there will be a vote by town meeting this spring about whether to adopt the specialized stretch code, which is basically like another layer on top of the stretch code. And this is an informational forum to kind of explain what the differences are between them. And there's, she's pulled together an excellent panel of experts, her and the CEFC committee um, on this to talk about the distinctions between the two. So this will be a virtual event um, tomorrow, Wednesday night, sorry. Um, and I believe it starts at 7 p.m. So I'll, I'll send this she and the it. other events, yeah, yes. out via email by tomorrow morning. Um, the second event coming up is a virtual community listening session or a, a visioning session regarding MBTA communities. So we had a second meeting with the MBTA communities working group to talk about visioning um, and where, because our process is so open-ended because our district or districts can be located anywhere. Um, at the recommendation of the working group, we're kind of taking a step back before we put anything on a map and conducting a visioning session with the community to understand better the goals and priorities for multifamily housing in town. 
And so this will be a facilitated visioning session. We'll be doing breakout groups. We'll have a poll. We're working on a companion survey that will go out to the community to basically ask a lot of the same questions. And we're working on putting together a meeting in a box kit so that um, individuals who have like a smaller community group and they want to kind of hold a similar session um, within the comfort of their home or over their own Zoom meeting or whatever can, can run a similar session for that. So this is coming up on March 9 at 7 p.m. That's next week, Thursday. And then the final public meeting coming up is on the 15th. On March 15th will be the final public meeting, an invitation for public comment for the Massachusetts Avenue Appleton Street Corridor project. Um, this was the project I was uh, with the select board um, with tonight. Um, we were asking them for a letter of support, not a letter of approval, um, to move forward with um, designing the corridor to 100% design. We did receive MassWorks funding to get us there, to get us from concept to biddable documents. We're using town funds up until now. Um, you know, the very fact that we were awarded these design dollars means we are in line for construction dollars. Um, so that's where I was tonight, asking for that letter uh, of support from the select board. And if you can make it on the 15th, I would love it if you guys would like to come and take a look at the design and offer any comments, suggestions, support. <laughs> Did we <laughs> get the great. support from the town? What's that? Did we get the support? There's a lot of love for parking. <laughs> Um, On street. Oh, you say we did not get a support from the select board. We got a support level. We got a support letter that enables us to apply for further funding. We did not get support of the design as presented. So, a lot of talk oh. about concept. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Thank you. Lots going on. You all are very busy, and I appreciate all the work that you're doing <laughs> on behalf of the town. <laughs> A lot of varied work too, so thank you. Any questions for Kelly and Claire? Steve? Oh, not a question, but I do have a bit of new or, business. There you go. So uh, this is regarding Section 542B8, which you all know is the a recently added set provision in the, in the bylaw that allows someone to reconstruct a home on a non-conforming lot, provided that the new home uh, meets a certain energy efficiency standard and is not more than 750 square feet larger than the previous structure. So we had, I discovered that we had our first one of those built. Um, it's on Palmer Street and that is my good news for the week. <laughs> How's, it look? In action. How's it look? It looks, it looks nice. It's, um, the builder is, one, uh, is a, is a local builder he lives in town he does a fair amount of work his company does a fair amount of work in town um it's it's a nice looking duplex it has a hers rating of 38 i think so her score yeah very low mm. below the requirement cool pretty good fantastic any other new business all right is there a motion to adjourn so motioned there a second? Second. Take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. We are adjourned. Thank you. Awesome.